the signs of the end are all around us. Immorality is all the rage. Ethnic hatred is on the rise. A world government is in the making. A cashless society is now a reality. Apostasy grips Christendom. Islamic terror threatens to bring the world to war. Should we panic? Must we live in fear? KJVBibleBelievers.com Where truth leads to hope. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and part two of our message from Mark chapter 7 verses 1 through 13 titled The Bible versus Tradition. You can find all of our messages teaching through the book of Mark by visiting our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com. Simply look for the videos in the menu on the right hand side of the web page and click on the Gospel of Mark where you will be taken to a page filled with dozens of links that will take you to the video for each message. Or you can visit our sermon audio page and download a free medium quality audio mp3 version of the message. That website again is kjvbiblebelievers.com. And now we return for part two of our study of Mark chapter 7 verses 1 through 13 titled, the Bible versus tradition. And it says, beware. Now, when a Bible verse starts with that word, what should you do? Beware. Beware. (laughs) Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the, watch this, tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Tradition of men, human tradition, bad. If it goes against the Scripture. And you should beware and not be deceived, not be spoiled. So back in Mark 7, he continues in verse 5 and says, Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? So they're confronting Jesus about His disciples. In verse 6, Jesus answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites. (laughs) That's the gentle Jesus that we left in (laughs) him. This people, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now, I have to ask this question. Is the name calling really necessary? I mean, calling someone a hypocrite. Listen, there, you're going to face that because there are times where you, you have to confront someone with what they're doing. I have looked at people and said, listen, the problem is you're a liar. <laughs> I wasn't just calling them that. They were lying. The problem with you right now is that you're an adulterer. That's not name calling. Now, if they're just disagreeing with me, and I'm like, you dirty whore, you know, they, wait a minute now, time out, time out, what'd you just call me? You know, that's name calling. Jesus didn't just drop empty name calling, he dealt with them at, on their turf, he told them exactly like it was. What's funny is the very people today who decry are speaking to apostates, oh, that's name-calling, and heretics, <gasps> there you go again, with plain, honest speech, are actually described in the last half of that verse. This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. See, people who want to be liked by everybody and don't want you to confront error, the issue is simply them. They don't like the fact you're making them feel uncomfortable and they want to be liked by everybody. And it reminds me, what was that character Al Franken played in the 70s where he said, and, and gosh darn it, people like you. You know, and that, yeah. you just almost hear them talking like that. That they... they They want to be liked. It's like their purpose in life. You know, there are people, some of them wouldn't admit to you, but their major concern with life is how many people are going to show up at their funeral. Mm -hmm. 
I'm telling you, there are. And they want there to be, a, they want a large crowd of people, and they want people to cry. And you, I never heard her say an angry word to anyone. And you're like, what was wrong with her? <laughs> I mean, there are people, and I, you know, we all have to, we don't want to be hotheads and just telling people off all the time. I had a guy yesterday, I'm in the lane down here going through town, and it, it, it goes into two lanes. Well, but I was just trying to turn left. I wasn't going to get in that lane, but he was worried I was going to, so he was creeping over into my lane to block me from being able to get in his lane, which I wasn't trying to do in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> and he was coming close to hitting my van, so I honked at him, and I was just going to say, I'm turning left, and then I didn't get a chance to because before anything else could happen, he flipped me the finger. <laughs> I said, yes, I am number one. <laughs> Go about along your day. And I turn. And that's the way people are. You shouldn't be, you know, can't be a hothead, you know, what's that called? Road rage, you know, keep it at bay. But there's nothing wrong with being angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. There's nothing wrong with speaking angrily if there's a cause. Jesus did so. But just be careful. Don't use that as a license to just become a crab. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. You know, that's not where we want to go either. But these people are, are confronting Jesus with a pretended concern. And that's what people do, you, do to you when they confront you about calling sin what it is. It's a pretended concern. They're not concerned with the fact you're calling sin, sin. They're concerned with the fact you're making them feel uncomfortable. And that's the way they're serving the Lord too. They go to church and say, Oh, I want to be like Jesus, except when He called people hypocrites. I don't want to be like that. And I want to be like Jesus, except when He told people they were whitewashed sepulchers filled with dead men's bones. I don't want to be like that. <laughs> And I want to be like Jesus, except when he took that whip and went into the temple and ran everybody out and turned over the money changers and all that. I don't want to be like that. That's how they ought to sing. Yeah. Write those lyrics down, honey. We're going to finish that song later. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get. You go to these churches and they all want to be like Jesus, except all that stuff that we don't like about him. They don't really like Jesus. You start talking to people about the real Jesus, they don't like Him. Their hearts are far removed. Talk is cheap, and that's all singing is. Singing is just talk. And here's another problem. They distort the real Jesus. Um, uh, I have a cousin who recently told me that he has to go around apologizing for Christians like me. Why? Because he was lied to by his father, my uncle. My uncle raised him to believe a false gospel and a lie. My uncle raised him to believe that being a good person, he'll get to heaven. He can atone for his own sins. And therefore, when you see someone who's out in the open homosexual who claims to be a Christian, and you don't accept that and you speak against it, then you're one of those Christians. And he has to apologize for people like me. And I said, listen, you're not apologizing for people like me. You're apologizing for the real Jesus and the Bible. You're apologizing for the truth. When you have to lie about Jesus and distort His image in order to present a Jesus you prefer, you got serious problems. One of these days you're going to stand and look at the real Jesus and face the fact you lied about Him. All these inclusive, affirming churches, a bunch of liars in those pulpits. They lie. And they lie because they, I don't even believe they believe in God. I don't believe they believe anything. I believe they are in those 
positions because they like the benefits, they like the schedule, they like being around people, they like the position of importance, their pride, their arrogance, their greed. That's why the Episcopal preachers are in those pulpits. That's why the Presbyterian Church USA preachers are in those pulpits. That's why those United Methodist preachers are in those pulpits. And I hope you're listening on radio and the internet because I enjoy every opportunity I get to tell those men you're going to hell and you're leading your flock to hell and you're going to answer for it. Amen. Amen. And where we are today is I'm done only talking about this stuff behind closed doors with people who think like me. We have gone to the point where most of my family have checked their brains out and are following this garbage. Most of my friends I grew up with have checked their brains out and are following this garbage. And we need to be willing to just stand up and say, listen, I love you enough to tell you the truth. You are following a liar. And if you put me in the car and take me to their house right now, I'll tell them to their face. And it's just disturbing to see the lie. It's strong delusion, folks. The Bible said that's what's coming at the end times. Mm -hmm. As we enter into the tribulation period, strong delusion. They'd rather believe a lie. Amen. And you can share the truth, and most of the people you talk to, they're going to just laugh and mock. and That's where we live. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to be like Jesus? <laughs> that's what happened to Him. <laughs> that's what happened to His followers. I'll just mention this. We have a message we'll be uploading in the next uh, week or so where we talk about the seven churches in Asia in Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 3.22. And we talked about how this pictured the uh, history of the church. And we've come down to... You can see these are the years that each of those churches in Revelation represent. We come down to the Philadelphian church, I mark as beginning in 1611 and ending with the rapture. We're coming to the very... You see this little line right here? That's where we're at. Yeah. Mm. These people, the Laodicean church, it overlaps. That church is already being built. Yeah. And most of the organized churches are there. And when this happens, the rapture takes place, that is all that is left. It started in 1881 when they junked the true Bible for the Vatican Bible and started producing those garbage, watered-down baby Bibles that everybody wants to carry. And it ends, question mark, seven years after the Antichrist sets, confirms the covenant for seven years, 70th week of Daniel. And that's where we're at. Somebody got mad at me for calling them watered-down baby Bibles. <laughs> I saw uh, somebody made a uh, uh, bumper sticker, uh, or maybe it's a sign on Facebook or something that said that uh, modern Christians, here's they are, the King James Bible is too difficult to understand. So they run to the Greek in order to tell you what it means. <laughs> now you see, talk about hypocrites. How many preachers and Christians today will say they can't understand the King James Bible? Because if you go back to the original Greek, it actually says theonoustos, which is with, to mean a God breathed. If you, you know, you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You, you just, you're, you're, going to you're going to teach Greek and you can't understand the King James Bible? Hypocrites. But we can't stop there. Jesus isn't done with his hate speech. In uh, verse 7, read that with me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Can you imagine looking at somebody and say, you know, you went to church today, where'd you go? Oh yeah, would well, you realize the whole time you're there it was all in vain? Imagine saying that. Truth is, most of them do go to churches where it's all in vain. Now, we're not saying that everybody who goes to this church is lost. There are a lot of saved people who are not walking in the Spirit, not allowing God to lead them. There are a lot of saved people who stay in those churches because of connections, because of family members, because of cliques, you know, because of that's where they've been since they were a child, all, that, all those different reasons. Still disobedience. Still needs to be confronted and rebuked. Because if they go to a church that isn't preaching the true gospel, 
that isn't using the true Word of God, it's in vain. We can sugarcoat it if we want to, but the word in vain means having no real value or significance. It's worthless, empty, idle, hollow. By the way, there are people who go to good churches who do that. They walk in, they sing out of the hymn book, you know, and then they sit down and they shake their head and everybody, and then they walk out, they hadn't heard a thing, they didn't really mean anything they sang, didn't pay attention to the words, didn't really worship. That's just as bad. If you're here today and you do that, then repent. Because you're one of them. <laughs> you're one of them. If you come to a good church and you just go along with the, you know, I mean, I remember uh, a friend of mine, he, he would sit in church. We weren't, I wasn't even saved. I don't believe he was at the time either. And we would sit there and when they would sing the hymns, he would actually just sit there and go, you know. And I'd be like, stop, man. He's like, oh. <laughs> you know. But the reality is, a lot of other people ought to do the same thing because they're not even thinking about what they're saying. They might as well just, <laughs> verse 8, read that with me. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. Tradition of men. That's what we, Colossians 2.8. Hope you memorize it. Beware. There's traditions of men. Verse 9, read it. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. And there's where you're in trouble. You start rejecting the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition, that's when you're in trouble. Yes. But we can't just pick on them. I mean, you know, we got all kinds of other... Even in the independent fundamental movement, you know, they got all kinds of traditions of men where you can't get... You go in their church and you're not wearing a necktie then you, you're, you're made to feel like you're backslidden. Mm -hmm. You know, and then there's stuff like that going on. And, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I kind of distance myself from churches that do that. I, they have been invited to preach in their churches over the years, and I just didn't accept. And because I go there, and it's such a show. You know, you expect the song leader, you know, take off the top and hello, my baby, bear, hello, my darling, you know. <laughs> it's what it's like. Every week, hello, everybody, it's so wonderful to have you here today. Da, 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 da. You know, and they say the same thing. And it's just, and it's like, you know, exit stage right, and everything's on time, you know, and every, you know. And we have the song, and then the uh, special, and then another song, and then a prayer, and then we have, and then that's all. Oh, and then we have the special where someone shows off their talents for the offering, and then, like, and then they sing a special before he comes, and it's all about hitting that high note. Everybody's like, can they do it? Can they do it this week? And, ah, you know, and like, oh, yeah, wasn't that wonderful? What did she sing? I don't know, but boy, she hit that high note. Yeah. I just can't stomach it anymore. I can't take it. And I have to say this. What about you? What about me? You know, what is our attitude? Just test yourself. This comes down to a daily level. This comes down to the things you do tomorrow. The, the way you live your daily life. Are you following the commandment of men uh, or the, com the, the, the commandment of God or the tradition of men? Are you in the Word daily? Are you praying without ceasing? Are you preaching the Gospel to those when you have the opportunity to do so? Are you loving uh, your neighbor as yourself? Are, you, know, you can ask all these questions. That's only something you can answer. But a lot of people, they'll go to church and they're like, they check in and punch in. You know, the card, I, used, I grew up in an era where you punched in. Now you probably have some kind of a mark of the beast or something. You wave over it. I don't know how they do it. But... Uh, <laughs> And, you know, you punch in, and then the day's over, you punch out, and that's the way people do church. They punch in, and they punch out, and then when they go back, everything goes right back to the way it was. Watching the same old crap on TV, listening to the same old crap on the radio, or your iPod or pad or whatever, 
I always get made fun of by my girls. I don't know the difference. And having the same old crap go through your mind. Hey, don't get mad at me. The word biblically is dung. And there should be a difference. If you walk out of here today and there's no difference, i got to ask why. There should be a difference. And it, if you have already made those changes in your life, then you just basically have to check yourself. Die daily, Paul said. Check yourself. And that answers the question. And of course the bottom line is when tradition contradicts God's Word, it is sin. Some examples that we hear, Grandma always said, yeah. well, I always was taught, or I was raised to believe, or, well, I just think that, and then fill in the blank. Yeah. If your grandma contradicted God's Word, your grandma's wrong. If what you were always taught contradicts God's Word, you were always taught wrong. If you were always raised to believe, something the Bible contradicts, you were raised to believe something wrong. And if you just think something, and it goes, my dad used to say, well, there you go thinking again. <laughs> and that's what, that's what it's like with our Heavenly Father. You think something that goes against His Word, well, there you go thinking again. <laughs> if it contradicts God, it's wrong. So let's close here. In verses 10 and 11, we're going to look just a couple of minutes. I'm not going to linger on this, but Jesus throws it in their face in a real instance. This is something Jesus says, here's what you're doing. Here's why I'm calling you a hypocrite. Here's an example of you obeying the traditions of men instead of the commandments of God. Read verses 10 and 11 with me. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And you say, what? <laughs> well, continue and I'll explain it. Verses 12 and 13. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. He's saying you do that, and you do all kinds of things like it. Now here's the explanation. The corrupt priesthood had said that if a man had wealth, you had property, you had investments, and all this stuff, and you didn't want to use it on your parents who had needs, you wanted to protect your assets, you could make the decision that you were going to enjoy it in the here and now for yourself, and then, when you die and gone, it'll go to the temple. And so that was what was called Corban. You could declare it Corban. That was the word used for it. It was treated as a gift to the temple, sort of like a living will, and untouchable by family and heirs. Upon death of the giver, it became property of the priesthood. Now, folks, there's something like that going on today with some folks. Now, I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with this, but listen to me closely. There's nothing wrong with taking property and such and protecting it from taxes and things and putting it in some kind of a shelter. And you can do that with ministries and actually they will set it up for you and then it, it, you draw from it while you're alive and then when you die it goes to the ministry. Nothing wrong with that unless you're doing that in order to keep from helping those in your life who need help. That's when it's wrong. See, what was wrong, they probably started out with this whole thing with good intentions. And you could declare something a gift and declare that it's going to the temple. That way they didn't fight about it. When you died, everybody knew that will say a piece of property. That property, when you die, goes to the temple. That's probably not a bad idea, but what they started using it for was kind of like a loophole. And saying, well, we've declared all this for Corban. So I don't have to use this to help my mother and my father or the other people in my family who have need. Now, this was called the prom, uh, promise with punch is what I'm calling it. It, it was uh, a commandment with promise is what Paul referred to it as. In Exodus 20.12, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now look, 
We're closing, but I just want you to understand this. I'm using this as an example just like Jesus did. Jesus said, this is an example of your hypocrisy, your lies. You're using the traditions of men to undermine and do away with the commandments of God. Look what the promise was. It was that if they would honor their parents, they would live on the land long. You understand that? Okay. Less than 40 years after what we're reading took place, that generation of crooks and liars yep. who pulled off this Corbin scam to neglect and dishonor their parents lost everything. Those men who are confronting Jesus right now, when they were old men, lost it all. It was in 70 A.D. God still wins no matter what you try to do. Amen. But the promise, if you honor your parents, you'll live long in the land. They didn't honor their parents. Mm -hmm. And boom. Now look what it says. In ver this, this, is, this is the close. How you handle yourself and your properties and all that, none of my business. But you need to understand God is the one who's overseeing it all. God's the one who said, you people won't take care of your own loved ones. And it wasn't just their parents. It could have been a brother or a sister or someone that needed help and they just didn't want to help them. Pushed them out the door. 1 Peter 3.12, read that with me. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and His ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Listen, folks, that is a precious promise to those who are following the Lord. But it is a fearful threat to those who are not. Those who follow the traditions of men, the idea that God's eyes are on them is not a good thing, not good news. But those who follow the Lord and follow His Word the idea that the eyes of the Lord are upon you. It's a precious promise. You can, you can have a sense of security. You, you can have the full knowledge that He is watching. He is aware of your life. And that's what you should leave out of here today, having the full knowledge of. You should know if you are following the commandments of God, you're going by the Word of God in your life, you should know that He's watching over you. And if not, He's going to treat you like a good father will. He'll chastise you. But even then, you can find some pleasure in knowing He cares enough. He cares enough to deal with you. God is in your life. Even in those moments where you feel all alone, don't go by feelings. You realize feelings can be, can be affected by whether or not you've got enough sleep. Or you may have had too much coffee. Or not enough. <laughs> your diet, things like that. Your health, your sugar level, blood pressure. All those things can affect how you feel. But you can know God is watching. And we go by what we know. Amen? That concludes our message from Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 13, titled, The Bible versus Tradition. Remember to visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com for more free audio and video Bible studies. If you would like to, you can contact us by simply going to our website and clicking on the Contact Us button at kjvbiblebelievers.com or you can send your letter to Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. That address again is Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. I am Pastor Greg, and on behalf of Bible Believers Fellowship in Worthington, Ohio, we thank you for listening.